Well, here it is, the finished OK2 OK kit banjo from Saga Music, which I've personalized just a bit with some departures from the included stock pats. Specifically, I swapped in this clear head because I really love the kind of steampunk look of the all-metal pot with the integrated arch top aluminum tone ring and wanted to show it off rather than hide it. Um, I also swapped in this hawktail tailpiece from Pisgah Banjos in place of the included Waverly style tailpiece. Just as a personal preference, I just like the look better. Um, everything else is as provided in the kit, and I really love how it all turned out. I mean, it looks, sounds, and plays absolutely fantastic, far exceeding my expectations, frankly. I, I didn't have high hopes for how this uh, metal pot with the odd hexagonal shoes was gonna look, uh, but seeing how it all came together, I immediately fell in love with its uh, quirkiness. Um, I love the, uh, the peg head uh, shape and the feel of the neck is nice. Uh, the rosewood fingerboard feels wicked nice and, and I haven't run into any uh, issues with the intonation. Uh, the tone is nice and bell-like. Um, a little bright, rather loud, um, all of which I attribute to the all-metal pot, uh, the arch top design, and uh, the clear head. Um, it's also pretty resonant and has a lot of sustain. Um, of course, it doesn't sound quite as nice as my Deering, Vega, or Ryder banjos, but it's definitely a really nice sounding banjo for what it is. And playability-wise, it's actually very responsive um, not quite as forgiving, again, as my expensive banjos, but it's just not fair to compare this kit banjo to fine banjos from professional makers that cost several times as much. Again, for what it is and what it costs, it looks, sounds, and plays amazing. Uh, for the last couple weeks since I finished building it, this has actually been my favorite banjo to play, uh, although that is certainly subject to change. Um, now, I wanted to show you the entire process of building the kit. I really badly wanted to show you that, um, and I did film it, but my camera's memory card was corrupted, and very sadly, those videos, files were uh, mostly lost, um, and the kit is completely built now. So much to my great disappointment, I can't show you that. But what I can do is I can tell you the highlights and lowlights of how it all went. Uh, putting it together was largely both a breeze and a pleasure, though I do concede that a lot of that was due to my existing experience tinkering with banjos. Um, a complete novice surely would have found the whole thing uh, more intimidating than I did. Uh, the, the instructions were generally pretty clear, uh, but a bit lacking in detail in some places. Um, the kind of details that a total novice might need, in fact. For that reason, I strongly recommend first reading this book. This is the book I read as a teenager when I uh, built my first kit banjo. Uh, that kit was a long since discontinued offering from Stuart MacDonald, but if you want to see it, I play it in my This Land Is Your Land video, link in the description. But when I built that kit, this book, Complete Banjo Repair by Larry Sandberg, uh, was incredibly helpful. It really gave me a lot of insight into banjo construction and what the various parts do and how to adjust them. And, um, and the book is still in print. I bought this copy not long ago from Amazon after not having seen my original copy in literally decades. Uh, I learned a great deal about banjos back then from reading this book and building that kit. So if you're at all thinking about building a banjo, whether from this uh, Saga kit or from Pats, or you want to fix up a banjo, or just better understand how to set up, adjust, and maintain your own banjo, I highly recommend this book to you. But back to the uh, Saga OK2 banjo kit. The first part of the build was also the most involved part, and it was uh, staining and finishing the neck. Uh, but it really wasn't bad at all. It just needed some light sanding. When sanding, it's important to be careful not to round off any of the uh, sharp edges around the peg head and be sure to completely remove any scratches or rough areas 
uh, that you can feel on the wood and get the neck as completely smooth as you want it to be when you're holding it and playing it because the finish will do nothing. The finish will do nothing further to smooth the neck or to hide the flaws. Uh, don't fall in the trap of thinking that it'll look or feel nicer when it's finished. It won't. It'll just be a different color. <laughs> Um, I masked off the fretboard and then I stained the neck with uh, Rust-Oleum wood stain because they had the color I like best uh, and it was a color that they called cognac. And uh, for the finish I used uh, teak oil which leaves a smooth satin uh, finish. Basically it just absorbs into the wood and hardens to act as a protectant leaving the wood looking and feeling not much uh, different afterward than, than it did before. <laughs> uh, a glossy lacquer finish w would have been an option, but it would have been much more involved to do uh, with a lot more room for error. And I'm talking about the kinds of errors that could be disastrous, such as ri uh, uh, drips and runs, uh, contamination with dust or hair or debris or fingerprints. So I didn't want to go that route. I prefer the I prefer the satin finish anyway. Um, it just it feels nicer. The a gl heavy glossy lacquer finish can be actually a little bit grippy to, to my hand anyway, um, and, and make it a little harder to run your hand up and down the neck. So I actually like the smooth satin finish anyway. Uh, the fifth string tuning machine needed to be hammered in, um, and uh, the hole for it was already reamed in the neck. And it was just the right size. Uh, the directions suggested you might need to uh, ream it out a little bit bigger, but I did not. It was already the right size. It just needed some minor cleaning out, which, which I just did with the flat tip of a screwdriver, just, just to clean out uh, stray bits of wood. Um, now to hammer it in, you first remove the knob, leaving just the post that it attaches to. Then you put a small socket from a socket set over the post and tap the machine into the hole by hammering on the socket so the force is transferred directly to the sturdy body of the machine bypassing the thin post by hammering on the socket rather than hammering on the post. Um, it's critical when you're doing this to rest the neck on a cushioned surface so as not to uh, dent or damage the wood. I just used a thickly folded up canvas drop cloth to do that. So once that's done, once the neck is done, the rest of the kit goes together in a matter of maybe an hour or so. The neck just bolts to the rim with the included hardware. A nut is on one rim bolt and a coordinator rod on the other rim bolt. Uh, the nickel plated hexagonal bracket shoes screw on to the aluminum rim through pre-drilled holes. Um, the neck holes are also pre-drilled and uh, the head sits on top of the integral arch top tone ring and again the kit came with a traditional Remo branded frosted top head but I replaced it with this clear head because I really like the look of the aluminum rim and the arch top tone ring showing through. Then the notched tension hoop sits on top of the head collar. Uh, the round nickel plated J hooks are then inserted into the bracket shoes, latched onto the notches in the tension hoop, and tensioned down. I have an entire separate video on changing a banjo head, link in the description, that shows you all the details of how to install a head and how to tension it, um, if you want to see that. Uh, I replaced the, like I said, I replaced the included Waverly style tailpiece with this Pisgah Hocktail tailpiece. Just as a personal preference, the Waverly style would have worked just fine, but I just prefer the look of the hocktail. And where the head isn't tensioned as much for claw hammer as it is for bluegrass, the downward string pressure of a Waverly or Presto or Kirshner style tailpiece isn't as necessary or desirable. Um, so, um, as many people do, uh, many claw hammer players do, I prefer either um, a no-notch tailpiece or this hocktail is a nice compromise. Um, it's not as big as those other bluegrassy style tailpieces, um, but it's not as minimalist as a no knot is. So you got something nice to look at, you got some downward pressure on the strings, and also it makes changing the strings easier because um, the, the hawk style tailpiece um, 
has something that's hanging on to the strings, holding the strings down be, besides just the post. A no-knot tailpiece has just the loop of the string going over the post, and that's it. And it, 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 it is easy for it to just pop off while you're trying to install the string. Um, the hocktail has a secondary way of holding the string down um, without being too big and without putting too much downward pressure on, on, on the strings. I also replaced the T-style flat mounting bracket that latches to uh, adjacent J-hooks with an L-style angle bracket uh, that latches to the coordinator rod where it protrudes through the rim. Again, just out of personal preference. Um, if all this is Greek to you because you're unfamiliar with banjo construction, don't worry about it. Just, just use the included parts and follow the included instructions. All of the included parts were just fine and the instructions walked you through the process uh, very nicely. Um, I used the included stock ebony on maple 5 8 inch uh, straight bridge. It's perfectly fine. Um, at the peg head end, the included no-name tuners just insert into the holes and screw, to screw together. Very simple installation for that. And they're actually um, surprisingly good. Um, the tuners that they provide, they turn smoothly and are wicked stable. Um, they hold the tuning rock steady. These have stayed in tune for days. <laughs> Um, I did replace their included no-name strings of unspecified gauge with my own preferred brand and gauge of strings. Um, the brand logo on the uh, peg head is just a rub-on transfer, but it, it looks nice. Um, on Amazon, you can buy more elaborate kinds of rub-on transfers that simulate peg head inlays. And they're easy to apply and they look cool. So if you don't want to use Saga's logo, um, you could uh, you can buy aftermarket um, uh, rub-on uh, simulated inlays as well. Now to be fair, I did run into a couple of minor snags in building the kit. Uh, nothing that I couldn't easily work around, but they were definitely frustrations in the moment and significant enough that they might be a bit off-putting to a novice building their first banjo kit. The first problem was actually visible in the unboxing video that I did. If you saw that video, you might recall the moment when I opened the box. I was kind of amused to, to discover a loose coordinator rod just rattling around inside. Well, later on, I did find the poly bag that it was supposed to be wrapped in. Um, undamaged and still taped to the inside of the box so something seemed to be off such that the coordinator rod was outside of its packaging um, and I soon figured out what was wrong all of the hardware that attaches to the coordinator rod uh, namely two nuts and two washers uh, was missing it was all missing as was the differently sized nut and washer that attaches to the other rim bolt in the neck so all of the nuts and washes that, that attach the uh, neck to the rim were missing. And I had no way to join the neck to the rim, even in, in a half-assed temporary way, until that hardware was replaced. Um, so you know, that was a disappointing interruption in the process. Now to their credit, Saga was very responsive when I informed them of this. Um, I just sent them a message through their website, and they quickly uh, sent me, uh, shipped me a set of replacement nuts and washes. Um, uh, but, you know, on the other hand, the kit was special ordered for me uh, by, by the music store. So it had to come direct from Saga, like that. So I don't know what to make of that. <laughs> and even though the hardware was shipped right away, it did you know, take several days for me to get it, which is a bit of a bummer to get that kind of unexpected delay right in the middle of building a kit. Um, especially when you're that close to being done and seeing how it came out, right? So in truth, I actually just ran to a hardware store to get the replacement hardware. But even that was frustrating because it turned out that they're actually metric sizes which are much less common here in the U.S. than, um, I think it's called ACE, um, 
um, imperial measurements. And it, it took me a while to uh, actually figure that out, <laughs> that, that it was metric. Not to mention it felt a bit weird running around a hardware store with a detached banjo neck. <laughs> it was all just a bit of an unnecessary headache, um, frankly. The other problem was that when I first strung up the completed banjo, the action was way, way, way too low with a string buzz emerging all over the place. I tried the little trick of adjusting the nuts at the tailpiece end of the coordinator rod, uh, but that didn't come close to solving the problem. I ended up having to uh, loosen the coordinator rod a bit, and um, that allows the neck to pull uh, forward from the rim, so it allows the neck to sort of slope this way just a little bit, and that raises the action. The coordinator rod is what joins the rim to the back side of the neck, so loosening it causes the neck to sort of lean forward just a bit, which raises the peg head up, and thus also the strings, and, and that therefore raises the action. So basically, it needed a small neck angle adjustment. Ideally, I would insert a, a small shim between the neck and the rim on that end and tighten the coordinator rod down again to get good firm contact between the neck and the rim. And, and I probably will do that at some point, but actually it seems fine uh, as it is for now anyway. Uh, even though the coordinator rod is a bit loose and the neck is pulling up a bit, it doesn't feel loose and it doesn't wobble. Um, and it has plenty of sound, so I'm not worried about that. Um, making that adjustment wasn't a big deal, obviously. It was just loosening the coordinator rod. Um, and it worked out well. It solved the problem. Everything is fine. But, you know, a novice might not know what to do. And it would be really disheartening to build this kit and have it be unplayable. Um, the best thing to do at that point, if for any reason the build doesn't turn out correctly, would be to take it to a luthier for adjustment at, at, at a music shop that, that has somebody who does repairs. Um, um, after making sure that everything was assembled correctly according to the directions and all the parts are fitting together firmly and all of the nuts are tight, if it's still giving you problems um, um, and you can't figure out why, take it to a luthier to have it you know, professionally um, adjusted and set up. It's probably a minor thing. But other than those two very minor issues, uh, building this kit was a real joy for me. And I got a very cool looking, good sounding, loud, fun to play banjo out of it. I enjoyed this so much. I might even do another one just to play around with giving it a different look, maybe with a different stain and a different head. Um, that's how much I enjoyed this. And, and how much I, I like this banjo. So that's all for this review. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and happy claw hammering.